All right, I'm joined on the podcast this week, and we're doing a special video podcast as well by the one and only Conor McGuire. We've we've been talking about getting you on the podcast for so long. <laughs> we've literally done something big, so you've done something big now. I've alluded to this long. Yes, time. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last week in Mulletmore, is it was it the biggest wave ever? Or um, yeah, I I, th- I think it was. Pers- like for me personally, anyway, definitely the biggest wave I've ever had there, and it was easily the biggest I've ever seen the bay that morning was just crazy the things it was doing <laughs> talk to me then we'll, we'll come back to that in a second but talk to me just about getting into surfing here in Bundoran uh, first of all um yeah I mean Bundoran is the perfect place to, to start surfing as a young kid you know we've we've got all the best waves here to, to progress through from starting from Tolland Strand down to Mulligmore it, it, it almost like it progressively gets more difficult the further down the coastline you go mm-hmm. towards Mulligmore it's like stepping stones to the next big big wave or whatever and yeah I mean I I was lucky enough to grow up at Tullin Strand with, with my granny and on my mother and um and my sister there and, and yeah I, I learned to surf in Bundoran Surf Co with Ira Madden back in the day and it was amazing surfing with him we just kind of bounced off each other like he was ultra competitive and it was he was a really really good friend to have and um yeah just along that road you know there's a few legends and the murphys being one of the the prime families like they yeah. always looked after everyone and they were like they're hugely influential for for surfing here in Bundoran you know um yeah just like getting like Aaron Reed and Ronan Ortson and all those kids like they they give them a bed anytime they wanted it and fed them and yeah, it was, it was just amazing to have like a, a little group of lads like that to, to bring our surfing on together. That I think that really, really helped surfing here in Bundoran. I suppose some people might have learned to surf as they were younger and kind of with with work and with school and with other pre- pressures, they didn't bother keeping it on. But you, you kept it on and I suppose it's your career now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's mad. Um, I was just so focused and driven and just always like absolutely loved surfing i think that was the the primary reason i like wanted it to be my career is because i didn't want to do anything else <laughs> um and yeah just having the support of the locals here like local surfers like richie fitzgerald his knowledge was like invaluable you know like what he thought and he was always so helpful and always wanted to to make sure that like we had the best and yeah that was that was really nice of him and then like the mcglones the britons um, all the lads in Surfco, like Pete Aiden, Josh, Kieran, like we, we all have a really, really good role models here, and and have like had amazing surfers here growing up too. So, in terms of the jump, then I guess from ordinary surfing, you could call it to the big wave surfing. How how was that? Is 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 it a massive jump? Is there a medium, a medium uh, sized waves that you can go to, or is it just you go from small to huge? <laughs> like I said, you know, Ireland and Bundoran specifically. Our little stretch of coast is like the golden mile you know <laughs> yeah. it's like better than anywhere in europe as good as anywhere in the world as good as australia indonesia hawaii um and to have like the variety of waves we have from Tullin strand to the peak to the waves in Tullahin and then you know out Mulligmore. it's um yeah those waves are just like the perfect opportunity to progress like you can surf little waves at Tullin and get mm-hmm. used to it get comfortable with surfing and Tolling gets bigger and bigger also, so you can kind of progress and push yourself, and then you go to the peak, and then you move on to bigger waves, and it's kind of, yeah, like I said, it's like a proving ground, and it's a great place to grow up for, for that. So you're here all the time, and you've, you've obviously you've surfed all around the world as well. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to, to travel quite a bit with, a, with um, surfing. Um, yeah, I've been to Australia, Indonesia, Hawaii, like South Africa, mm. um, Nazare in Portugal, like all over Europe, you know, so, but nowhere compares to Bundoran. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased, but yeah, like a lot That's of- a good bias. Yeah, <laughs> I think you'd say the same, would you? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I just, the, the likes of um, Red Bull, do they, do, they, do they find you or do, do, do they spot you? And then how, how, how does that work? Without um, going into too much detail, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends, um, Rory Tuhi, a guy I surfed with a lot when I was younger oh, also, Rory, he's, yeah. he's a really, really good surfer. He lived here for a while. Um, he had a friend called David and David worked in Red Bull Ireland and then Rory put me in touch with David mm-hmm. and David got me sponsored by Red Bull and yeah the rest is kind of history now David works in Red Bull HQ right. in Austria so wow okay yeah, he's uh 
he's amazing. I can't thank those guys enough. You know? they, uh, they were pr pretty happy. They got their bang for their buck this week. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's so. talk about, obviously, the, the, you've been in the news for the last uh, week or so that you surfed the massive wave that was in Mulletmore uh, last weekend at the end of Storm Epsilon, Epsilon I think yeah, it was called. Um, talk to me then about, obviously, you be, you're watching the, the weather forecast and you have a very narrow window yeah. For for to put all this together and to get your team your crew together, yeah. but I know that you're kind of prepared to drop things out of hat and, and go. Yeah, pretty much. You know, this like these little swells are big swells. Sorry, they yeah. pop up in the Atlantic. Those are the, the days we wait for. You know, there's like a handful of days out of every winter that are really prime conditions for Mulligmore, and they're the days you you dream of and wait your your whole season for. And this day, Wednesday morning, was like no other. It was a day that I've been waiting for my whole life, not just a year, and yeah. like it, it exceeded my expectations and dreams as a child. Like I didn't think Mullugmore could even look as crazy as it did that morning. So um, yeah, it was, it was just really impressive. Talk me through then, sort of maybe the, the 24 hours beforehand, you, you kind of, when did you realize this could be the one? Um, I guess, you know, I was, I was just treating treating it like just took it as it come yeah. or as it came day by day um i was just looking at the charts like i could just seen this huge black blob in the north atlantic as did the whole surf world and i mean like national media picked up on it too because it looked like it was about to eat ireland yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i mean it was pretty obvious that those numbers that we we're seeing were going to be absolutely ridiculous but Ireland being Ireland, you can never be certain. Like the conditions change here so much, as you know, like four seasons, four seasons in a day, and um, yeah. So it's only really the night before, or the morning of, or when you see the waves that you actually know it's pumping. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I just the, the night before, I just kind of relaxed and um, Did just you sleep. I did sleep was it actually. Like Christmas? The, yeah, <laughs> the night before, the night before, I was oh, I was up all night, man. Yeah. I was freaking. But that day, I was really chilled. Like I just stretched all day and did breathing exercises and just like was totally at ease with myself and totally ready for it. Like, yeah, I was gonna say, where, where was your head at with that? Were you kind of obviously the, the, a bit of nerves? Obviously, I presume. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it just felt like everything that I've ever done in surfing or or any work I've put in all led up, up to yeah. that morning. And um, yeah, so it was strange. I was quite content and at ease. So I did, it was weird. I should have been shitting myself, but I was, <laughs> I was okay. <laughs> so you had your, your team, um, they were all prepped. They were all, and it was an early start in Mulletmore. Yeah, um, I got up at five in the morning. And um, just like I said, stretch, did some breathing exercises, got ready and got down to the harbour at like quarter to seven, was already in my suit and just waiting for the lads to get there. I was yeah. just like shaking with excitement. And, you know, I, like I said, I wasn't that nervous because the lads involved, like Finn Mullen, the Irish Tow Rescue Club, I had Owen Murphy and Dave Law on the cliff spotting me. Yeah. There's a paramedic on hand, a private ambulance, the Coast Guard were informed. Yeah. Like it couldn't have been safer and it couldn't have been a better opportunity for me to push myself. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of, yeah, I was, I was like, confident that I could do it and what what was what was the plan or was it just go with the flow and see how it went or um Finn I wanted to be out there first light I wanted to be launching the skis in the dark and be out at Mulligmore while it was getting bright and Finn said that's not the smartest idea Connor you need to wise <laughs> up and we have to wait for the Coast Guard to be able to see us if um if something does go wrong yeah. so yeah like I'm, I'm thankful I listened to Finn <laughs> he straightened me out a yes, bit yeah were you kind of scooting around then kind of waiting for the wave or was it and was it just one wave that you got um well we got out there and we we assessed the situation first for a few minutes mm. and it looked crazy like there was just waves going inside out and they, most of them didn't look surfable so um yeah i just i had my friend barry motorshead who he kind of showed me the ropes out at mulligmore and taught me everything i know and um yeah he was driving me into these waves so he was the, the perfect guy to pick them and yeah he did an amazing job like it was it must have been so difficult it was like a dime a dozen and yeah. it was like picking a diamond out of the rough and he he was able to do it so it was very right, lucky. right. okay <laughs> this is this is the one let's go yeah <laughs> so what talk me through that and where your head was at then um, like i know obviously you gotta be concentrating and because if you flinch at all then it's probably yeah it's exactly. not it's not good but yeah at the end of the day you want it you gotta enjoy that moment as yeah, well for sure 
um, yeah, it was surreal because, you know, on like a standard 20 to 30 foot day when it's absolutely pumping at Mulligmore, like the best day of the year, I'm pretty scared and like, but I, I manage the fear, but, you know, like going into the wave, a lot of the time I don't even remember the wave. Yeah. It's just like a distant memory and I'm just in the zone, you know, and um, yeah, but this one was different. Like I had a few waves before, I had one wipeout and fell and got pretty rattled, held down for a while and I just came up knowing that I wanted another one and to go mm. bigger and I just remember seeing the, the whole horizon go black pretty much. There right. was like a set that started feathering in the middle of the bay in between Sleeve League and Mulligmore pretty much and you could just tell this thing was going to be like the biggest wave of the day. It was massive. Like I was, I got like a, a an instant rush of nerves but then I just settled and like Barry and I are sort of so connected on the yeah. skis. We've been driving so long. He kind of just looked at me and was like, do you want this one? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and he just picked me up and whipped me into this huge, big, clean face. It was like, I don't know, it was the most perfect wave I've ever been on at Mulligmore. I just remember dropping down the face and yeah. this thing just stood up. And as it started feeling out where the reef was, it just like jumped in size times two, I'd say. And like, it just felt like I was skateboarding down a hill for like, forever for, for so long and yeah. yeah i just remember parking it and standing on this like huge face and it was really cool because i actually got time to take it all in and yes. appreciate how beautiful it was yeah, like yeah, it yeah. was just this big green emerald wall of water yeah. like it was pretty cool because obviously you have the video footage board. and you have people's recounts of it but there's yeah. nothing like being able to, to take it all in if it yeah. was a quick wave it probably wouldn't have been worth it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> But um, yeah, the, the view really, yeah, it was it was amazing just to be able to have the time to take it in and just be sort of comfortable in it. And this is your trusty steed? <laughs> yeah, this is the one. I've wow. had this one uh, quite a while now. Um, I was lucky enough to be gifted that by a big wave surfer mm -hmm. called Will Scudden. He's, um, he's from New York. He's well known. He's on the big wave world tour. And yeah, I, I went through a phase of snapping a lot of boards i broke five boards in three days and two of them weren't mine so <laughs> he uh one of the other ones was his actually and he um yeah he felt sorry for me and gave me this thing <laughs> wow when you think about it and this the size of, of the wave it's it's quite a a small board i suppose if anybody is familiar with learning yeah. to surf it's the big foot nine foot yeah, foamies exactly. and stuff and that's quite small um, connor yeah with these with the toe boards they're they're weighted as well they're, right they're a lot heavier than a normal surfboard oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just to like cut through chop and wind and stuff and um, when you're going really fast but like for toe surfing you use these things and the straps and um, but for paddle surfing which is we, what we also do at Mulligmore you'd, you'd have a much larger board yeah. just to get the speed up to be able to get into it but yeah it's crazy like you don't need a very big board on a wave that big it's yeah. kind of <laughs> it's a bit of a contradiction I suppose <laughs> you've been hounded i guess by, by the media for the, the last couple of days uh, ourselves i was included and thank you for taking the time <laughs> oh, to, to come and have a chat to us um we had a message through on the discover bundor and facebook page th during the th in the last 24 hours as well that they had watched it on the six o'clock news in perth in australia no way so um you're you're <laughs> a worldwide phenomenon connor and we're That's proud cool. to to have you as a, as a bundor man of, of course so as much. well um what's 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 next is there any plans or um I'm just taking it as it comes now, just like trying to settle my brain and mm. <laughs> process everything. But There'll um, be a few more interviews, I suppose. Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got a few videos coming out with Red Bull soon from around Bundor and Mulligmore, and um, that should be coming out in the next few weeks. And other than that, I'm just going to keep on surfing big waves, doing I suppose, and wait for big swells to come in and hopefully get to travel soon enough as well to do it internationally. That would be mm -hmm. the dream. So. Well, you're elite, so you are you allowed to travel, or how does that work? I am, but I mean, if I travelled and came home and had to quarantine for two weeks and missed a big swell yeah. here, that would that'd shake me to the <laughs> core, so <laughs> I'd rather not take the risk. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Well, listen, all we can say is stay safe, and thanks, thanks for having a chat to us. Congratulations thanks, on Shane. the success, and we're really proud of you here in Mildoran. Cheers. I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Cheers, Pleasure. man. It's been lovely.